Yo, what's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm going to be bringing to you my first MLB The Show 22 video and it will be a hitting tips video. We're going to go over settings and also um, what we use in order to be the best possible that we can be. I've used this since MLB 15. You know, it's helped me be get to the level where I'm at now. That being said, before we take a look at the hitting tips video, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn those notifications on, leave a like on the video and in the comment section below, let me know what you have struggled in the past and will be the shows and maybe I can help you out through the comment section or let me know if this is your first and will be the show and uh, we can talk a little bit more in depth if there's anything I missed, but I'm going to cover all key points in this video, okay? Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok. All three links will be in the description below, so give me a follow on three platforms. I highly appreciate if you would and also make sure you go check out my shorts channel, pitching underscore rebel shorts on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, it's completely free. I would highly appreciate if you did, okay? All right, let's quit talking and let's look at these settings. All right, so hitting wise, um, we want to be on Legend, okay? Uh, Legend is the highest difficulty and it's the hardest difficulty that you're ever going to hit on. So you, that's what you want to be on, okay? Even if you're, you know, a beginner and stuff like that, you want to try to always compete at the highest level, in my opinion. And that's the way you're going to get better. Okay, if you just practice on like all-star or veteran, you're never going to be able to hit the highest level. If you can hit the highest level, you can hit the lower levels. So that's why I think, in my opinion, you should be on legend. Um, and for me, now this is all preference-based, okay? This is not at all meaning that this is the typical or the one hitting view that you need to use, okay? This is all preference-based. Now, do a lot of top players use this? Yes, strike zone is the hitting view that a lot of top players use, but you never know, you may be way more comfortable using something else. This is for you to decide on what you wanna do. I'm just showing you what I do and tell you what other top players also do. Um, in play view, this has nothing to do with it. I just prefer high, it's what I've always used. Hitting interface, zone is a must though. Zone is what everybody uses that's very good at the game. Um, I just don't think there's any other option that's even remotely close to zone. So that's what we use. Buttons as well. I mean, you can use analog, but I think buttons is more efficient. And then flick for the analog type. Uh, PCI anchor, so that was implemented into this year where you can actually anchor your PCI in certain spots in the zone. I'm not gonna personally use it. And honestly, um, I just don't see it being that beneficial if you want to get to an elite level. Maybe at the lower levels I can see it, but if you want to be at an elite level, I don't know if PCI Anchor is really the it factor that's going to push you over that edge in my opinion. So we're going to turn the anchor and the dots off. Uh, PCI Indicator on for me. I mean some people use it off. It's all preference based. And then PCI Center and PCI Inner for me are Wedge and Diamonds. No outer. So I got no PCI outer. Uh, my PCI color is yellow, PCI transparency is 50%, and I have no PCI fade outs, none. So that's just preference based. You know, this is all about you. Some people just use the diamonds with nothing else. Some people, you know, use the outer PCI and diamonds inside. It's just all preference based. Some people use a green color, red color, higher transparency, lower transparency. It's all preference based, okay? I'm, this is, I'm just giving you my settings. This is what I think, this is what I feel most comfortable with, okay? At the end of the day, you gotta pick what's most comfortable for you, okay? Um, it's just like a batting stance in real life, you know? A lot of guys are great hitters. They all have different stances and stuff because that's what's comfortable for them and that's what, what works for them. Same thing when it applies to a video game and hitting. Whatever's comfortable for you, you go ahead and do that, okay? All right. Now let's quit talking about the settings and let's look at let's look at where we're gonna go. Okay, now, all right. So we're gonna use custom practice. Okay, um, one thing I do love to use for custom practice, which I haven't done yet, I need to save it in this year's game, is we're gonna put the fastball pitch speed all the way up. Okay, and uh, something I implemented last year towards the end of the year, I actually gonna put the the off speed pitch speed two clicks up. So this is the middle. I'm going to do two clicks up because I feel like the off speed pitch speed having two clicks up is what emulates online gameplay. When it's in the middle, it is a little bit slower and not as sharp. I think the off speed pitch speed two clicks up is what you need to be at. Okay. I just implemented this last year towards the end of the year and I feel like it works. Fastball pitch speed though, all the way up. Okay. Um, this will train you to be faster and quicker and have, you know, 
those timing, those uh, that timing reflex that you need to be able to hit the fastball and sinker and cutter, um, which are the most important pitches to hit. Because if you can't catch up to the heat, you're never gonna hit anything. Okay. So this is what I use uh, for custom practice. We're gonna have to apply this. We're gonna save it, and we're gonna put. I'm gonna just do BP sliders. Okay. Now, I always personally like to load it, okay? So BP sliders load. All right, now we're gonna go over down here into custom practice, okay? I usually personally like to face pitchers that throw hard or they throw a sinker cutter combo. Um, you can go over to the Brewers as Mr. Corbin Burns is on their team and he is the best of both worlds, okay? He's got a hard sinker that's an outlier on it, so it's the hardest it could possibly be and he has a hard cutter, so. This is a good guy to face. We're just gonna pick one of the one of the legend teams and we're gonna go to ship it. This is the stadium we use. Use whatever stadium you like, just this is preference based. I'm gonna put the camera on now that I've let you see all that. All right, everybody, now we are in the most important part of this video, which is custom practice, okay? We're gonna use custom practice to get better, okay? Um, as I said, Corbin Burns is a great guy to use. Got that hard cutter, got that hard sinker. Those are the two toughest pitches to hit in this game. But two of the three toughest pitches, the, the last toughest pitch is an outlier, um, an outlier four seamer, okay? But Corbin actually has outlier on a sinker, so that's, you know, that you get the double combo there with the sinker and the outlier. But the toughest pitches to hit are a sinker, a cutter, and a outlier fastball. So you can use something like Chapman or some, or Emmanuel Place too. He throws an outlier cutter. Uh, but we're gonna face Corbin Burns and we're gonna use Frank Thomas through the fact that righty on righty is is the righty on righty and hit, hitting righty on righty and hitting lefty on lefty are the two toughest things to do, okay? Same handedness, facing the same handedness pitcher, okay? Now the toughest thing to hit righty on righty is gonna be a sinker and inside, okay? So inside sinkers are the toughest things to hit, okay? So we're gonna sit here. You know, now in BP, we get to go to practice type and we get to pick pitch and location, okay? Now, when we put all inside zones, it throws everything in the strike zone. So this is just more to learn how to track that sinker, especially the inside sinker righty and righty, okay? This is great tracking practice, okay? What I like to do first to warm up my eyes is to just track the pitch. I'm not even swinging, okay? I'm just tracking the pitch with my PCI. I'm seeing that movement and break on the sinker so that I know that that's what the sinker looks like, okay? I'm trying to track it all the way in from as soon as he releases the ball. I'm just trying to pick up the ball as soon as he releases it, okay, at the release point and track it all the way in, okay? Boom. All right, now I feel comfortable. I think I've seen a couple pitches. Now let's try to track and hit. And right there, it blew by me. Like I said, that the sliders being all the way up is gonna make it that much tougher, okay? There we go. That was a great swing. Now we just changed it up a little bit there. We got a little bit quicker with the swing and we were ready for that. And right there, we're, we're good timing, but our PCI was off of it. We're good timing again. So at least we got the timing. We got to work on the PCI a little bit better. That's good PCI, but we're a little bit later side of good. We're still good timing. We just had later side of good. We want to try to get the early side of good or perfect timing. There we go. That might be gone. And it's actually not gone, but it's a, not a bad swing. Our PCI just wasn't on it. And I'm a little bit late. Like I said, this is very tough. Even for me, I do this quite a bit. I haven't done it in 22 yet. This is the first time going to custom practice, so got to feel it out a little bit. But there we go. That should probably be gone. That's not a bad swing. It's off the wall. Okay, good swing. Like I said, sinkers inside, toughest pitch for righty on righty, okay? If you can master hitting that pitch, and this is why this is beautiful, right here doing this is just trying to master that sinker inside, you're gonna be so ahead of the game, okay? Just right here, just using that, tracking that pitch, you know, seeing what that break does as soon as it comes out the hand, if you can see that pitch, you know, you're gonna be ahead of the game. That's how, you know, you just gotta, it's all about repetition, muscle memory, muscle memory, muscle memory, repetition, okay? After you start feeling comfortable, okay, you can always take it off and now, okay, you can work on outside zones too. I don't think the outside sinker is as hard to hit righty on righty as the inside sinker, but it's still a tough pitch to hit. So it's still something you wanna work on. But, you know, you have a little bit more time, okay, right? You can hit it later side of good because you're going opposite field and it could still be a good hit, okay? So that's still a good swing, okay? 
Now, once you start feeling confident with that, you can take that off and that's gonna, now what you've done when it has nothing is it will throw to any of these zones and it can go outside the strike zone. So now you're also practicing um, plate discipline, okay? So when I do this, I'm not just free swinging, right? I'm looking for a good pitch to hit. If I don't pick it up well, I try not to swing, right? Because there's no reason to swing at a pitch you don't pick up well. Um, that was a little bit off the zone. Like I said, it ain't easy right there we go. Perfect, perfect. It ain't easy, but the more you do it, I promise you, the better you're gonna get, okay? Um, the next hardest pitch to hit, righty on righty, would be a cutter outside, because you gotta stay back on it a little bit longer than the sinkers. So you're gonna wanna practice those outside cutters, okay? Just see it all the way in again. See what the break does for these cutters, okay? See what the break does. Like I said, you're trying to pay attention to the pitch as soon as it comes out the hand and you're trying to see it all the way into your PCI. Just try to see it all the way in, okay? And boom, right there, that's a good swing. All right, again, same thing, you do this, you do this every day till you start feeling more and more confident in yourself that you get to the point where you just take it off and you're like, okay, it's gonna be in every zone. And right there, that's a bad swing. That's a tough pitch. I'm telling you that outside cutter can definitely be tough, very tough to lay off of, okay? Like I said, it's not easy, not even for me, and I've been doing this for a long time, but it, I promise you it does get easier, okay? Definitely gets easier the more reps you do, all right? So that's righty on righty. And then again, these are the two pitches that are toughest to hit, but I'm not saying you shouldn't be practicing your you know, change-ups and sliders and curveballs, but these are the two pitches that are the toughest to hit and the two pitches that people are going to use the most when somebody has them in their repertoire, okay? Um, then we'll go over to, we got Corbin Burns still, we'll go over to Big Poppy here. Here's a lefty. And... Um, Toughest pitch to hit. There's two toughest pitches to hit, in my opinion. Same thing with the uh, lefties. And first one is gonna be a sinker, the sinker as well, but the outside sinker to lefties is toughest to hit, in my opinion, um, for lefties, okay? Going, that, going the other way with that sinker is going to be a huge role in how good you're gonna be, okay? This is one of the tougher pitches to hit in the game. So again, it's all about practice reps on that outside sinker. Just get that, see what that pitch break does. And boom, right there, base hit, okay? See what that outside sinker does. See that, I, get, I keep preaching it. See that break, okay? You see that break, see what it does. Get the repetition over and over again, and you're gonna build muscle memory, okay? And then the toughest pitch, in my opinion, to hit from an opposite-handed pitcher to an opposite-handed hitter is a cutter. Okay, the inside cutter is the toughest pitch to hit. Um, it just feels like it's freaking coming in on you super tough. I just, it's just a really annoying pitch to hit. But if you can get really good at hitting this pitch, you will be in a very, very good position to be a very good hitter, okay? Um, here we're just practicing. We're just practicing seeing it inside, okay? You see, I'm not even hitting, I'm not squaring it up. I have good timing, but I'm not squaring it up right now. There we go, that's, I mean, still not squared up, but it's a lot better swing than the other one. See it, nope, see how that busted my hands in. I'm telling you, this with this pitch speed sliders up and this inside cutter, it's it's one of the toughest pitches to hit. There we go, that's gonna be a gapper. I'll take it, get down, boom. All right, again, once you start feeling confident in these cutters, you can start facing it by itself without anything. And now it's gonna throw balls, strikes, you know, so it's, this will get your plate discipline. Even you know, even though you know cutter is coming, right? Even though you know it's coming, you don't know where it's coming, it's still not easy to hit because of the pit speed sliders. The pit speed sliders make it that much tougher because you still have to react very, very quick to the baseball. Right there, we swung at a bad pitch. That's not what we want to do. Like I said, it's not easy. And like I said, this cutter is the toughest pitch to hit, in my opinion, from a righty pitcher to a lefty hitter and a righty hit. Uh, lefty pitcher to a righty hit. Still want to practice the other pitches, but these two are your main course for sure. You know, once you start mastering those pitches down, then I would definitely suggest to practice the sliders. Sliders are the, probably the hardest off-speed pitch. To, uh, I would say sliders and slurs are the two hardest off-speed pitches to hit. Sliders and slurs are the two hardest off-speed pitches to hit. So that's what something else you want to practice. But again, sinker cutter is the main thing you want to practice, okay? Mm -hmm. And then finally, once you get to the point 
where you are very confident in yourself in hitting, you can go over here, okay? And practice type, you go to team practice and you can do like an actual at bat. Oh, count, we're gonna hit like an actual at bat, okay? We're looking for something to hit that's over the middle. That was, that was disgusting, that's gonna be a ball though. But here we're gonna actually have an actual at bat. And like I said, this is when you start feeling really confident in yourself that you feel like, okay, I picked up all these pitches, I know what they do, I know that this pitch does this, I know that this does that, and I feel like I need to start now not seeing the pit, the same pitch over and over again. So I need to be able to, there's a base hit, good swing. I need to be able to hit these pitches um, on a consistent basis without knowing what's coming in. So you would go over to the regular practice like I showed and start playing like an actual game. And when I say like an actual game right there, oh count, not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna spit on it, it is what it is, okay? Oh one now, we still have two strikes to live with. So we're gonna take it like an actual game. And right there, that's a base hit up the middle. Not the greatest of swings, but you know what? It does a job and it's a base hit up the middle. Or not up the middle, but through the right side of the infield. You know, like I said, most important thing to hitting is recognizing those cutters and sinkers, man. I'm telling you, cutters and sinkers are the two hardest pitches to hit in the game. They are the meta pitches for a reason. If you can get those pitches down, seeing them over and over again, you will be on a good path to becoming a very good hitter, okay? Lastly, uh, outlier fastballs are obviously very tough to hit as well. And um, again, off-speed pitches, if you can hit the sinker and cutter, then the off-speed pitches will be that much easier to hit because you can stay back on something, okay? You can recognize those pitches, stay back on them, and, dry, and, and uh, hit them with good timing, or perfect timing, obviously. Um, okay, another thing I did not mention is um, the way I like to start my, P personally, the way I like to start my PCI is slightly up and in, just a little bit of pressure, that's it. That's, that's what I call my batting stance, okay? That is what I call my batting stance, that's how I start my PCI before the pitch comes in. Now, some people start their PCI, let me, Hold on a second, maybe if I hold R2, he won't pitch. Some people like to start their PCI, well, I can't even do it. Some people like to start their PCI. Some people like to start their PCI low and in, mid, low and away, up and away, down the middle without even putting any pressure on it. It's all preference based, okay? I've been doing the slightly up and in for so long that there's no reason for me to change, okay? And it's been I've been very successful with it since MLB 15. I don't see a reason to change. Even when I'm, even when I have, you know, so we all go through slumps, right? Even when I'm slumping, I'm not thinking about changing my PCI, my PC, where I start my PCI, why? Because then I have to adjust to something completely new. There's no reason to do that. Just stick to Old Faithful and get back into BP when you start slumping and, you know, just, just attack those main pitches. Usually when you're slumping is because you cannot pick up those sinkers and cutters and outlier fastballs you're not hitting them well and you're trying to overcompensate and then you can't hit the off speed either so again if you can you go into bp and you master those those the two hardest pitches to hit sinker and cutter you are on a very good path to becoming a great hitter right because those two pitches are the meta pitches for a reason you have to be able to hit those pitches to be a successful hitter okay and then obviously plate discipline comes with reps okay um we're looking for good pitches to hit i mean that can't you know you know you play baseball you know that's that's a thing but the biggest things you want to focus on is be able to learn how to what the movements are on that sinker and cutter so you know how to differentiate the two and you are able to have that muscle memory to get fooled less often than not okay all right so those are the biggest things for me in hitting anyways i hope these hitting tips helped you i hope you take these hitting tips, go into BP, and try to become the best hitter that you can be. I'm telling you, BP is the place that you will be, this is the place where you will become a great hitter, okay? Like I said, when it comes to settings, yes, you have, in my opinion, zone is the, is the ultimate uh, setting that you need to become the best hitter you can be. And the reason being is because I don't think there is any other hitting interface that is as good as zone. Uh, when it comes to your PCI size, your or not size, but PCI, like diamonds, wedge, color, transparency, all that is preference-based, okay? That is whatever you want to go with. 
I go with what I've been doing for a long time. That's what I want to do. Uh, finding what's comfortable for you, that is on you. I cannot tell you how to do that, okay? And then lastly, custom practice. Get those sliders up, the fastball slider all the way up and get that off-speed slider two ticks up. Actually, you know what? Scratch that three ticks up, okay? Um, because I'm telling you, online compared to offline, the sl uh, off-speed sl um, slide, or sorry, the off-speed pitches break a lot harder, okay? So you need to do something to make them break harder and by do by bringing up the off-speed sl um, sliders up, that's what it makes it do, okay? And then once you're in custom practice, like I said, use this batting where you can actually pick your pitch request and you know get practice righty on righty, lefty on lefty, and stuff like that. Make sure you're facing pitchers you're going to see in Diamond Dynasty. Corbin Burns for now, you're gonna be seeing. You know, go to the Legends, find Randy Johnson, find Mike Mussina, okay, um, you know, Face guys that throw that sinker cutter. Find guys that have the outlier on the fastball. You know, get after with that outlier fastball, but I'm telling you the two hardest pitches to hit are sinker and cutter in my opinion. You get those two pitches down. Also, the outlier fastball, like I mentioned, you need to also do that as well. So you need to find somebody that has an outlier fastball and you can practice against. But the two main pitches I think you need to worry about are the meta pitches, which are cutter and sinker. And then also, obviously, along with that is the outlier fastball, but the main entree on what you have to, I keep preaching it, on what you have to learn is that sinker and cutter, okay? Like I said, get it to BP, get after it. I'm telling you, it's all about reps. Get those reps in, and I promise you, you're going to see yourself, you know, a month, two months down the line, three months down the line, you'll be like, wow, I've improved so much on hitting. You know, as long as you put in the time, you will get a lot better hitting, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn those notifications on. Leave a like on the video. And in the comment section below, let me know uh, if there's anything that I didn't cover that you want to know. Just let me know in the comment section. I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. And also let me know how you feel about the hitting tips video, okay? If there needs to be a two po uh, uh, second part, let me know. If I covered everything that you think I needed to cover, please let me know in the comment section as well, okay? Lastly, make sure you follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok. All three links will be in the description below. So give me a follow three platforms. I highly appreciate if you would. And also make sure you go check out my shorts channel on YouTube, pitching underscore rebel shorts on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. It is completely free. I would highly appreciate if you did, okay? Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Love y'all. Peace.